In July of 1985, 18 really young Nigerian footballers departed our shores. Destination across the Pacific, to the Far East, over the Great Wall, and into China. The event, the maiden edition of the FIFA Under 16 World Cup, sponsored by Kodak, the photographic giant. These young lads departed our shores uncelebrated, unheralded. In fact, Nigerians thought nobody's interested in what they termed the Kiddies World Cup. Job two and a half weeks later, precisely the 11th of August 1985, following a stunning 2 0 victory over West Germany, these lads changed Nigeria's football landscape forever. They taught Nigerians that we could actually go and conquer the world. They became the first and the original world champions that Nigeria has ever produced in football. Cue the mayhem on their return. Old men, old women, mothers and fathers, children, workers, things were abandoned, the streets, everybody came onto the streets to come and welcome them. Making of the World Good Neglects is a program that is designed to tell the story of Nigeria's forgotten heroes. After all the acclaim, after all the celebration, after everything that was promised to these players on their return from changing the landscape of Nigeria's football forever, they've been forgotten. This program hears their side of the story. And in fact, in actual fact, we left the country uncelebrated, unnoticed. Because we were dressed in the native attire. Okay. I think a person from the immigration setup asked if we were going with Ogunde <laughs> to go and perform somewhere. The baby eagles were based in Dalian against Italy, Costa Rica, and Saudi Arabia. The first match was against Italy. In line with the general apathy in Nigeria at the time to this competition, this match was not shown on TV. Apparently, as Lucky Abonsibafe and Victor Ibinoba were to tell us, the baby eagles were battered by the European side, and only the heroics of keeper Abonsibafe and Locke kept the Italians out. Lucky Abonsibafe even saved a penalty. Pilamomo grabbed what proved to be the winning goal. I, I can remember when the penalty happened, my late Frank is like somebody said, Lucky is going to catch it. Because, because funny enough, I do catch penalties during our training sessions. It's like okay. they just have to believe that it's, I have specialties in stopping penalties. And it just happened I caught the penalty as well. So when we get, actually get to the, to the competition proper in China, we were hot. We wanted that cup. We want to make name. We want to make history because a lot of them back home in Nigeria, we, we were not even recognized. Uh, there's no which team, which team, you know, like that. But if our first match was a, it was a very strong match between the Eaglet and the, the, the Italians. It was very strong. At first, at the first uh, minutes of the game, we were like, you know, shaking a little bit, you know, because uh, most of us haven't played in you know, a big time competition like that before, you know. So, but after some minutes, everything had to go up, then we started football, you know. You know, God of, God of Soccer was on our side because they really pressed us. But thank God we came out uh, victorious. We won the match one nothing. Mm. They luckily saved the penalty and a lot of other chances. Mm. Somewhere hitting the poles, bar like that. Really? It really <laughs> was a strong match. <laughs> and after the game, uh, there was this player. We used to be friends in the hotel because we were all the same in the same hotel. With uh, the other teams? With the other teams. Okay. Uh, so, in the, in, the, in the course of the game, there was this ball that Unduka Agbade used to hit one of the players. It was really strong on the, on the ball, you know. So after the game, none of them wanted to talk to us again. Say we are <laughs> we can't be broke. <laughs> after the win over Italy, a drab goalless draw with Saudi Arabia followed. Against Costa Rica, however, the lads ran riot. Victor Ibinoba 
Bila Momo and Babatunde Joseph, the goal scorers in a comfortable 3 0 victory. When there was a chance in the middle, not there by the. Oh, this is short and he does it. Oh, and it's a goal. Goal number one. Then it will look at that old pattern and the big goalkeeper until soon. So this one will be key up the goal. That's a big one at the goal. It's a goal. Following the victories over Italy and Costa Rica and the draw with Saudi Arabia, Nigeria moved into the quarterfinals without conceding a goal. The confidence started coming after we won Italy. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because you guys this in the game against Italy, it was well, we did. yeah that one was very difficult. So we kind of lost in our, our composure. Thank God we were having Chris Ajiku then. I think mainly it was the one that brought the confidence into us by telling us what to do okay. and how to do it. Hungary stood in their way. The Hungarians took the lead but two goals from Ignoba and one from Bilamomo took the Eaglets into the semi-final. A semi-final match against fellow Africans, Guinea, that was fraught with difficulties. Skipper Nduka Ubadi explains what the coaching crew warned the team about before the match. We felt that we were playing against African, Africans this time around and that uh, surely we will, we will win them easily. But we were warned even before the match that the match is not going to be easy. That even if we score three goals, we have to maintain the strength, the speed and the discipline to be able to end up with the match, we getting victory. But uh, we somehow, I don't know, maybe should I say some kind of laxity on our own part, that uh, we had all the opportunities to, to beat them in the first 15, 20 minutes of the game, if you go back to watching that game. But what happened was that we got the penalties, and we, we got the penalty, and someone, Shekou uh, Fakwetu, now, the Babatunde Joseph, now threw the penalty away, and uh, from there, we scored, they equalized, and it became difficult for us to be able, because they grew into the game, because they were afraid of us as well. But they, they grew into the game, and uh, at the end, we, it was, we had to win on penalties. The confidence gathered from the victory over the Hungarians. The Nigerian team settled early against Guinea. Fatai Atere giving the team an early lead. We know we're playing Guinea. I think Chuku did say, this is going to be the real test. It's not Africa versus Africa. They know what you know and they do what you do. So let's go in there and put in our very best. And This was a goal that apparently had different meanings in the dressing room, as Lucky Bonsivafe explains again. When I tell us, because somebody said, oh my God, this game is going to be hard. Since, since I know Atere, if I tell score, score a goal first for a team, they, they hardly win with that goal. <laughs> you know? After this goal, Nigeria took total command of the match and dominated proceedings. A domination that led to the award of a penalty. Victor Ibinoba was designated penalty kick taker for the team. However, in this match, he abandoned his duties and allowed Salisu Nakade to take the kick. Salisu's weak effort was saved by the Guinean goalkeeper. Guinea was a tough match anyway. It was tough. It was tough. I heard you were supposed to take the penalty. Yes, you know. 
in the game or before any game free kicks and penalties i was the one assigned to be playing it mm -hmm. but when we get that penalty everybody just rushed to the to the ball no no i'm going to take it, i'm going to take it you know? and when the coach said victor i said no 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 let him let him play everyone's going to let him play you know but the coach was really an end of me that i was supposed to i was supposed to take that penalty but after the game after the penalty the guy lost you know, we lost the penalty and the game was so strong. <laughs> you know that at, before the end of the game, they had to change me. <laughs> you know, and the, as a person, but it was really, really annoyed of me. Following the penalty miss, Guinea equalized. It was only the second goal considered by this team and the last in open play. First one. It is saved. It is saved, Dele. It's unbelievable, Yinka. It's really unbelievable. Watch it again in slow motion. At full time, extra time brought no further goals. And so, onto the dreaded penalties. Once again, Lucky Agbonsi Vafe was the hero. We should see that in slow motion. I can't believe that. That's right, he got his hand on it and he was lucky. Going in, he moves it, he takes it. Very deceptive shot, very nicely taken. And that has shot Nigeria into the league. Two goes to Nigeria, one to Guinea. Next uh, kick is uh, for Esther. Uh, in fact, that was number 15 shirt. We got that Koda Momo. shoulder for that Momo. Let's hope it will come in slow motion. So there it is. I think it was right too much in case. And there he takes it and runs it over. And from number 8 shirt, Sunny Adamu, he missed the goal. Oh, that's it. Very good. Very good one. And that makes it a 3 2 1. Two more. And that will be it. Takes it. Very, very intelligent shot. Very intelligent, and it was the full length of Lucky Agmose Wafe, but he just couldn't get onto that ball. See it again in slow motion. Right foot, and there it was, Nigeria. Very good goal. Goalkeeper Nduka. moved in the direction he of that ball, but uh, it move. was a little too fast. Ah, well, Nduka wouldn't have forgiven himself. He has really done marvelously well in this series look at that again uh, a few more millimeters the goalkeeper's hands will have been on it but he would have had to punch it taking the fourth one for his side Ooh, it's a nice goal it's a nice goal almost the same manner in which uh, Nigeria scored the uh, other goal so that makes it now four to a uh, five to Four to three, beg your pardon. I, I told you I was getting confused. And with this one now, Nigeria would have won if it's a goal. It is a goal. And the Eaglets went into the final following Bilamomo's final penalty kick. I don't want to say much. Adili, you've got to come in here. It's been a very long road to this moment. We shall watch it in slow motion again. Five goes to three. The scoreboard reads, but we will have to call it five goes to four because that last penalty to be taken by Guinea would be regarded as having been taken and scored, but it cannot change the winner, which is now Nigeria. Finally, Nigerians back home were getting into the groove of the tournament as the team progressed, as shown by the newspaper reports following the victory over Guinea. so far. Like my colleague said, it has been 12 days of global competition. They started on the 31st of July and culminating in what we are about to
starting with saying that the Mr. Mesh, one of the greatest uh, uh, kings in like World Soccer, Italy. And of course, at the end of 18 minutes, it was one goal in favor of Nigeria. Uh, the next team, the next match, the second in the qualifying series, the players now trooping into the field and getting ready for the big match. The, um, Saudi Arabia had a match with Nigeria, and, uh, and this was a side which was highly favored in this competition, and of course they defeated Costa Rica. Uh, uh, the technical crew that we had, very, very good, Christian Chuku, and until this very day, I respect him so much, because he told us how the game was going to be at the final, even before we played, two days before the match, while training, and that what was going to happen, and it, we did exactly what he taught us, and actually we, we got the victory, we scored the two goals and then uh, it ended. Uh, against the Germany team, against Germany, no, yeah. you know what happened? You know, we had to fly from our city okay. to the main city okay. for the finals. And when we arrived the city, well, let's say we arrived the city today, the next day is the match. So when we arrived the stadium for the match, there was this trust place that was going on between Brazil and the Guinea team. Yeah, Guinea team, yeah. So, the crowd, when they saw us, Nigeria team, they were booing us, woo, like that, like that. But when the Brazilian team now came to come and watch, they were a lot of clap, hailings, and the rest. What we now say to each other is that, boing or no boing, today match, even if we are going to lose, the German team, they are going to have it tough. But we are not going to lose. That was, that was it. Our spirit was so high. You know? We are not going to lose. We are not going to lose. Before the late, um, the, the late uh, former chairman Kazobo, late Patrick Okom, all of them came to talk to us, delegates from Nigeria and the rest. Uh, this match is very, very important back home. That a lot of people they are wishing us uh, good luck. A lot of messages was coming. They will now know that yeah, we now have people now believe in us that yes, these people are really doing something good for the country. There, the spirit more again, higher again. The West Germans had an attack led by Marcel Witichek, who was the tournament's leading scorer, going into the match. The Nigerian technical crew, however had a cunning plan for him, as Chris Sabara Prodricks explains. But the real checked boy was the one I told the late Kingsley Akionbari that used to tie the rubber band, uh, the white band on the head, that he was a very strong man marker, that you should make sure that he doesn't follow him anywhere, but you should focus him in mind. Anytime he comes, you should not allow him to go. You do everything within his arsenal to make sure that he disturbed him because he was the chap scoring all their goals and he scored them red handedly. He was just giving the ball, he was, re he was ready to beat about six people and hit the ball to the net. He was a very strong guy. That's from uh, that's the throw in. And that's the first contact between Kingsley Yobare and Marcel, which dipped into the middle when the wedding was taken. The German trying to take over, but a good displacement, and here come the Nigerians again. Two number four shirt into space, and it's collected. Oh, too much for himself. He manages it to square, and he's almost in there. The goal! Goal number one to Nigerian, the Germans are stunned. Tele, come in. Ladies and gentlemen. It looks like history will be made here. What is in what slow, is in slow motion, ladies and gentlemen? Just like the semi final against Guinea, the Nigerian team settled quickly. A superb through ball from Fatai Atere set Babatunde Joseph free on the right. His ball into the center was eventually bundled in by Jonathan Akuburi. First blood to the Eaglets. Fantastic. This is the top block. On the 16th World Football Tournament. This goal came within the first five minutes of the game. So early was it that the federal delegation eventually sent to China, led by Emeka Omerua, Anthony Ikazowo, missed the goal. They did send, but they, they, did, they, they did arrive on time. 
I think the I think the, the then chairman came, the late good captain Kazobo came with other delegation like two, three. So we so we didn't even knew they they were around. Okay. I think I think as he told us right, when he was when he was walking into the stadium, as as he was sitting down he had a goal. He never knew who scored. Because the Nigerian name was written in Chinese language, yes, blah blah yes, blah. Yes. So one of the delegates that went with and I tried to use the IQ to see somebody that's going to make a kickoff. Then they did not know Nigeria scored. Before we traveled out of the country, we played a friendly match against one uh, court of appeal in Lagos. And the center that was the youth club he was playing for before we left Lagos. And he was he was injured. But I saw that injury as an injury that would not last for more than two weeks. And we were leaving the country under two weeks. So we had to take a risk. That hoping that we will qualify through we will go through the qualifying round. Before we go to the the completion program, he would be strong enough to play. So as God would have it, he did not play any of the matches in qualifying until we got to the knockout stage. The first knockout stage he played and we changed him because he was not strong enough. The last match against West Germany I had some chat with two and my other uh, assistant, uh, Bala Shamaki from the United States. We were saying that we should leave him on the, on the bench and later in the game we could come in. And I said, and they got it from me, that a player that is so important, it's good to have him go in first. If at the end, uh, before the end of the game, you would not continue, it will not continue, it could be changed. But if you make the mistake of putting him as a, a sub, and then he goes in to take over from somebody, and he's to go out another 10 minutes because he won't go, you are making two mistakes, you're changing two players at the same time, and that is not good enough. They agree. And he started the game. And he scored the first goal, the first five minutes of the game. You know, the other could have been there, but because of the injury that he was, it was not an injury right from Lagos to China. So in China, there they were a lot of doctors that were taking care of him because we also believe in Jonathan that yeah, he's a good player, but because of the injury, but the coach has to, to take him there. He know why. You understand? I think we first up in that game ended one in right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then there was a big pressure on Ox. What you could just said, then we were even giving up hope. You know, children of 15, 16 years, ah, boy, we, we've tried. If, if we can take Steve home, let, let's go. Then Chuki, the man again came. We never knew we were playing 40 minutes in that, in, in that championship. Okay. <laughs> so Chuki just came again and said, guys, do you know it's just 40 minutes left for you to be a world champion? And if you look at 40 minutes, it's a very small time. I was it. When I said to myself, just 40 minutes, we'll be the world champion. Uh, you know, this is new boy late, he's like, everybody not spoke in Benin. He said, but if not that, today we will die. <laughs> you know, all those kind of things. Then suddenly we saw group captain just came in. We all shouted, Chemoch. Then I started pleading. He said, if we should lose this game, Nigeria will take his head. They will say he. He's come with his bad luck to the team because since he has not become, we, 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 we've been winning that we should try and win this championship. It was then we now knew the importance of what we were fighting for. <laughs> we used to say a lot of things, you don't have to remember all. But I told them that they are going to make a history within 40 minutes. And that history will remain forever with them. And uh, I'm happy that they are now seeing it that what I said is a fact. So there is no way you can call under 17 and everything, you won't go back to 85. 
and you look at those boys, those scored by them, them and so on, and lucky them and so on, you find out that they are they have entered in the sports film of Nigeria, if they are saying it like that. Well done, not well done, and the goal kick coming to Germany. If you ask me, stage again in slow motion. See that um, ahead of there, but not well directed. And that chance seems to have been lost again from Germany, but it comes on to number 13, Chad Gabriel. Ooh, good one this time round. But the Nigeria header gets onto it, and a good shot. And the Germans put it down onto the far side. And it's caught by goalkeeper Lucky. We have two minutes to the end of the match, just about a minute and a half gone now. And the Germans trying to move on on the far side, but it's a throw in this time to Nigeria. A minute and a half to go. And the black committee beginning to lose for the end of the match. Oh, we need it too far out there. But this time, Quinoba is in there. And he dribbles his man. He takes a good shot. Nigerian and the cup is coming down home. History has been made here in Beijing, capital of the. Yeah, you know, you know, a lot, um, a lot of people, even ever since I came to this country, a lot of people have been asking so many, saying so many things, so many things, asking questions like that. that uh, I, I said before that I was trying to even shoot the ball more <laughs> from the lane to the lady time. Blah, blah, blah. I am not told that I'm a player. At the same time. A supporting striker. Okay. I asked them, have you seen a player or a supporting striker in an opportunity like that? He wants to he wants to just shoot the ball like that so at the delay time. If I want to shoot the ball out like that, why should I be dreaming? I have to go past two defenders before playing that shot. You understand? My mind there was that I want to score too. If it was that uh, thing very well, I was supposed to be the first goal scorer. Yes, if it was the thing very well, I was supposed to be the first goal scorer, but Jonathan just came from nowhere out, you know, like that. But I want to score. Everybody wants to score. So, you know. But anyhow, I still thank God. <laughs> the team just get there. I play left and right till mm -hmm. tomorrow. Even my left, if, if, I, if there's short for me to take my left, it's even stronger than my right. But people don't know that. Yes, the final game wasn't on penalties. Was we, we won, we defeated the Germans. Clear, 2-0. The first goal was scored at the early minute of the game and the, the second at the last minute when no one ever expected it was going to be like that. Because Victor Gnoba was very, very tired. And I was hearing the voice then, Victor, come to this side, come to this side. And immediately, when Bella cleared the ball, it was a recall and it went straight to Victor and Victor took the two guys on and then the little swab and little swab and shot with his left leg and then and then it was all over and then we took the trophy home the mood then was that one thing i could remember what we did during the qualifying series all the years of struggling of preparation training in st gregory's ground training in the union bank facility traveling around the country playing friendly matches and every other thing just came before me within just a fraction of some, let me say, some seconds, like about 20, 30 seconds. The moment I lifted the trophy, you understand, my case was beyond, was beyond tears. 
actually because uh, we thought we were going to perform so well, but we never knew that we were going to win the competition. You understand? And winning the competition gave us a very great boost. Now, part that every other person was very, very happy. And until this very day, I'm saying to my colleagues, giving me the opportunity. President, you are, I am that good. Beautiful shot that there. Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. That is the Kodak trophy, which will have a permanent residence in Nigeria for the next one year, and for the next two years. I, I woke up uh, to see Nigeria holding the cup. <laughs> Let me put it that way. It, it was our first foreign to world football, even at youth level. Um, it was a victory in which uh, the departure was not heralded. The players we did not know. Uh, Broderick's fine, we're going for another 17 competition. He picked a club of players, some of them from a particular part of the country. Uh, nobody bothered because, I mean, it was like, uh, perhaps if he had lost, uh, Ruth, but we woke up to find out that suddenly they were in the semi-final, then they were in the final, and uh, we said, hey, <laughs> by that way in the final, we said, this is possible, we could win this. And before we knew it, we had won the cup. I think it was a changing point. He put Nigeria on the world map. Then, well, Kodak um, uh, World uh, Championship, but notice, we are talking about youth. And, 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 and there was this calculation. If you could produce such talented under 17 players, then there could be more from where this one's came. Mm. And then people projected into the future. If these boys are 17 this year, in five years, Nigeria will go places. Those, those are the pro projections I see holding sway today that uh, unfortunately some of us um, are wondering why it's not working that way. So, talent, you know. Mm. Unknown at home, not heralded there, but suddenly they have won it and the world saw, I mean, they were analyzing the team, they now went back to their first matches, how they got to the final. And, uh, for God's sake, I look at that goal in the final, you know, from nowhere, blistering shot for an under 17 boy. So that, that is what even Nigerians were surprised. The, the, world, the world was turned, but we were also surprised, pleasantly surprised, that we could have such a blend. Uh, coaches who, I mean, back home, we, we did not uh, really, apart from Chuku, who was like um, an Islam coach then. So it was, uh, it was, it was good. It... Uh, no, what happened at that time is that it's not as popular as it is now, that competition. That was the very first edition. Even the country was not interested. Mm. They don't even uh, know anything. But at last, when we went and succeeded and brought the cup, we were the only team that made the country proud at that time. Other teams had fallen off one way or the other. So the then Minister of Sports by then, I think Omerwa, you know, was excited. And uh, by then, I think, uh, was it the Kazabo or who? Kazabo, not a Mara. Mara was the chairman, Kazabo was the minister, you know. So that was the only thing he could hold as an achievement by then. So when we went there, nobody was expecting. We were climbing, progressing, going. When we get to the semi-final, it became, you know, everybody became focused. On the final match, the whole country was able to say, ah, we have something to hold back. These boys have done very well, you know, and 
That was the first time it was staged and we won it for the first time. 85, you're talking about the under 16 uh, yeah. world uh, championship, yes. Uh, it was another brilliant performance. I watched it on television like uh, most of the Nigerians and we played excellent football. How did you feel when you finally touched the cup? You know, it's very, it's very, very, it's very, it's very, very good to be a champ, to to emerge a champion from a championship. I think we were, we were very, very delighted and very, very happy. Then I think we think we thought we've done the country proud, just on a very little platform. We don't even know much, much is going to come from that one. We just pick up the cup, and the cup was so heavy. Is that is that not heavy? We were changing it. You will carry it from here. There's another person will carry. It, 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 it got to a time nobody wants to lift up the cup again. We, we said Sarah had to go and lift it himself. When we landed at Canoe Airport, we said, Why will I say because there is no way for us to land? No. They said we should wait. Because we landed Canada at about five or six in the morning. Because they wanted us to land in Lagos at about seven thirty eight. So we were not asking. He said because people are packed for outside, wanted to give us a warm welcome. I said, Welcome for what? You know, it's you know, it's the first experience. Chukuna came and decided to explain that before we leave the airport to get out, it's going to take us like three hours. Therefore, he said, because we are just world champion. We, we just a man, a world champion. When we go to Lagos, there were people close to the runway of the airport. Are you serious? We, we landed, and they have to take us behind the plane run into somewhere and get into the bus that was driving us around. It was then I knew what Chuku was saying, that we've done something very good and Nigeria is in chaos now. victim of circumstance. At that time, there was a change in the in leadership of the country. It was a uh, uh, Babangida who was there at the time we left. But when we came back, after we came back, it was another government. I think it was. So, uh, Trinidad Diabo and Buhari were there. Yes. Uh, uh, IBBK, uh, uh, Babangida came on. Uh, you know? So, it was promised then that when we came back, the following year, as a reward, we will be asked to go to China, I mean to, to, uh, to, Argent, uh, Mexico. to Mexico, to watch the senior World Cup taking place there in 1986. And uh, they gave us uh, some uh, stock in the, in the uh, central bank that uh, we're having a 53 Naira, 75 Kobo uh, <laughs> fall out every half of the year. That, that lasted for 10 years. So for 10 years, we're having a 100 and something Naira a year. For 10 years, I said, that's a, it's not up to 1,000 that they gave us. We don't know the value of this, we didn't know, you know? So, uh, and uh, they said that uh, streets should be named after us in our state capitals. That they did in the new state here. We had uh, at, uh, if you are conversant with the new state here, at the uh, Ogawa side there, nearly opposite to the University of Benin. There are some quarters there. You see all the names. The names of the various players and uh, coaches. Like, and myself, I was the only coach there from the state. My name is there too. 
and they said that they should, we should be given the appropriate national honor. That one has not seen the light of day. I don't know what happened. But uh, God's hand is against. Maybe I'm still expecting that maybe one day somebody will come up and say, ah, the first World Cup this country won in 1985. Uh, there was no award for the, the technical people, the chief the people who took the team to that place. That would be very, very difficult for me to answer. Because sometimes when I remember, I cry. When I remember, I cry. Unfortunately for me, I had gone round the world by the grace of God playing football. And I've met those people that we went for the competitions together. From Saudi Arabia to some of them in Syria, to some of them in Spain, to some of them in Argentina, some, so many of them all over. Even in Russia. Most of those guys that, did, that came second, I saw what they gave to them. I heard it spoke, we normally talk. But uh, Nigerians should know that we were not given anything. And I challenge anybody that says that uh, that we have been given anything. That they give street, us in, the street name where is the street today? Where is the street? Where where are those streets? I've been there almost about three or four times. Mine, they said it's at uh, about seven or eight of us at Tugbawa because then the former Edo states, Ilaria Diki, Kinsley Kionbare, and some others were all Bazuaye, all there. Where is the street until this very. I, I, you know, it's difficult. It's the things, all these things are difficult to explain when sometimes we look at the way things are organized in this country. It's difficult to explain. Until this very day, nothing has been given. If I would tell you, we were given some kind of bond or something like that with the CBN or so. One of my teammates came to me that they went after 12 years to collect the money and what they, what they found out. I, I have not confirmed, so I will not want to speak about that publicly. You understand? Until I go to confirm this, that uh, they said the majority of it will come, 1995 to 1999 or so. You understand? And at the end of it, that they went there to collect the money and what all they found was about 3,000 Naira. You understand? I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I will go, because I've not been around for a long time. I will go to collect mine. Maybe after speaking, maybe after speaking now, maybe in about a month from now, when I'm chanced, I will go to collect mine and see how much. Then maybe you come to interview me, then I'll be able to tell you that this is the, this is the amount of money that has been given to those that won the first World Cup under 17 ever that is going to be hosted by FIFA. You understand? For the African race and for the black race in diaspora. How did you used to feel every time you saw the goal on TV? Yeah, I, when I'm home, they want to show the network, they show that goal like that, you know? Even if I'm going to eat, I have to leave that food first and wash and wash and wash. You know? You know? No, everybody, even you, when you see yourself like that, you will always be happy. My family, all of them. You know, when they see the guy, oh, Victor, where are you? Say, ah, come on, come on. You know, like that. You know, we're all always happy. But even FIFA did not give it the kind of publicity because the sponsors by then did not want Nigeria to win. Who, who, who buys camera here? Talk of Kodak to buy films and so on. They thought that an European country will win it for their product to sell, you know. So unfortunately, we were able to win it and it was a first again for us.